So there's been a sell-off in the bond market and today a sell-off in the equity market. Hi everyone, welcome to the Traders Circle weekly market update. Today is Tuesday the 3rd of October and before I begin you do need to be aware that whatever I say is general advice only. It doesn't take into account your personal circumstances and you have to decide if it's appropriate for you. Today was the RBA day, the first Tuesday of the month and it was also the first RBA meeting with uh, Michelle Bullock as the governor. So they did keep rates on hold. That was pretty much as expected by 90 plus percent of economists. Uh, and they sort of did foreshadow maybe another interest rate rise coming. For me, the statement was actually a lot more dovish than uh, I think was expected by the market. And in fact, after the statement was released, we did see the market push up maybe up to 10 points, maybe even up to 15 points at one point, although it did pull back towards the close. The RBA said that uh, future rate rises will come down to data uh, and they said that they may need to tighten if necessary. I think people were expecting a bit more hawkish, a bit stronger language trying to signal another rate rise moving into November, so at the first uh, Tuesday in November. Overall, I actually thought the statement were, was pretty good. I thought it read slightly better than the last few. It wasn't the exact same copy-paste job that we saw for you know, most of the past few months was mostly similar, but I thought it was a, a bit better than the previous ones. And like I said before, perhaps a bit more hawkish than expected. They sort of talked about some of the uh, uh, arguments against raising interest rates further as well as, you know, the arguments for raising interest rates. In general, I, I do have some issues with all central banks, but particularly our RBA about how they've handled the current uh, uh, inflation crisis. I think the biggest thing to comment on is that, you know, it's, it seems like they think that it's almost like a direct mechanism of, you know, lifting interest rates, inflation comes down. And, you know, we, we know from like the work of Irving Fisher and other economists that there's a lot of cases and a lot of times where interest rates and inflation are positively correlated. And you just have to think, you know, interest rates are a cost. They're a cost for businesses. And if costs go up, what do you do? You lift your prices. And so it's not a guarantee that you just tick up interest rates a small amount and inflation dips a small amount. That's not how things work. If you do want to bring down inflation by lifting interest rates, usually you have to lift interest rates enough to create negative economic outcomes, to create you know, a recession or, or a severe economic slowdown. And then that brings inflation down. And the sort of piecemeal, very, very slow approach that we've had, I think is going to end up with higher a higher terminal rate and higher for longer interest rates than we would otherwise have had you know had we seen a, a, a more rapid approach initially that being said the rba is a little bit between a rock and a hard place a lot of our inflation is imported and you know they kind of also have to keep interest rates high to keep the australian dollar strong because otherwise that imported inflation is only going to get worse uh, but regardless, I thought today's statement was very well written, at least better written than the past few. And I thought that uh, it was perhaps more dovish than the market was expecting. It wasn't enough to save our market today, though. We still fin finished strongly lower. And that came from, you know, a massive, massive sell-off in bonds that we've seen over the past couple of weeks and including a sell-off in bonds that we saw overnight. So I did want to touch on the bond yields. They've basically hit levels not seen since... You know the early 2010s uh, they exceeded the peak in 2013 i think they're at the highest levels pretty much since 2011 now and really this is a, a sort of massive negative thing for the stock market uh, you know keep in mind although interest rates have been higher previously debt levels are, are higher than previously as well the amount of uh, um, you know private debt personal debt the amount of um, leverage that individual Australians have taken on is higher than it was, you know, pre GFC when we had higher interest rates. So eventually people will feel the pinch and I'm sure there's plenty of people feeling the pinch and, you know, the bond market, you know, continuing to, to sell off and bond yields going higher is I think causing a, a lot of concern, not just amongst investors, but no doubt, you know, individuals, mums and dads, people with mortgages, uh, you know, the general public as well. And I think that's quite rightly so, you know, if you've uh, had a, a very high interest rate on your mortgage this year and you start to see bond yields heading higher again, well, really, it starts to sort of, you know, cause some uh, cause for concern as we move into 2024. Um, 
bond yields have not just been rising in Australia, they've been rising in the US. US yields have been pushing higher as well. That's really negative for the market, um, for the stock market. And indeed, overnight, we did see stock market selling. Major US share indices did close higher, but it was, again, it was a handful of the very large cap technology stocks that kept things higher. Of the, the sectors in the US, it was only really communications, which is things like Google and Facebook, uh, Netflix, and then the technology stocks, you know, the Apples, the Teslas. It was only those two sectors that closed higher. Every other major sector closed lower, and some sectors closed significantly lower. Utility stocks, which are often seen as bond proxies, they fell almost 5% on average overnight. Uh, so it really shows that these bond yield movements are moving markets. The rate sensitive stuff is being moved by the, the bond yields and you know in, it is being moved in a big way as well. If you are looking for a, a bullish rebound in markets, what you want to see is those bond yields start to come down. Now what would bring those bond yields down? It would be economic data starting to weaken. The next major bit of data that could trigger this will be the US unemployment read on Friday night. Now unfortunately, unemployment is expected to fall. Now that is obviously a good thing. No one wants to see anyone lose a job. But that's not what the market wants to see if it's going to rebound higher. They actually want to see an uptick in unemployment because that's a sign that the economy is slowing. And like I said before, that's pretty much the only mechanism by which interest rates can reduce inflation is if the economy slows. So that's really what we need to start seeing before we can, you know, perhaps see a bit of a bullish rebound. The other big news of the week is that we did get a temporary US government funding deal. It only extends government funding for another 45 days. So it's not a, it's not a, a long-term or even a medium-term solution. Basically, they have to go back into negotiations immediately, try and get something to uh, you know, keep, keep the lights on moving forwards. But at least it does avoid a bit of a, a potential negative spike from you know, US government agencies having to close down. So we'll have to wait and see what um, deal can be negotiated beyond this point. It's been a bit of a case where a lot of U.S. Republicans have been, you know, pushing for massive spending cuts, um, you know, massive uh, aid cuts and things like that. Um, and if that is the case, you know, it, it, it might be that those terms have to be agreed to to get a deal through. I suspect that the Democrats and, and indeed President Biden don't want this to become a massive headline news issue as we go into an election year next year. So definitely watch this space. It's not fully resolved just yet and expect to hear more about it across the next month. So let's have a quick look at the charts. We'll start with the chart of our market. This is the XJO, the top 200 stocks in Australia. And really it's gone to its lowest level of 2023. That's the support level at roughly 6,900 index points. We reached this level in March after the uh, US bank issues. Um, they did have some mid-sized banks collapsing. And again, that was due to rising bond yields uh, and falling bond prices. And uh, we did reach this level right around the start of the year, end of December last year. This is pretty much the last line of defense against further selling for our market. If we go below this level, uh, we have to look back towards 2022 to find new levels for our market. And I hate to say it, but ultimately the next major key level is perhaps even all the way down at 6400. I don't think we're going to go down there. I don't think we should go down there. I think things are a little more positive now than we they were then, uh, particularly the fact that I think we're closer to the end of this rate tightening cycle. Um, but like I said before, it's probably going to go on longer and end up at a higher level because of how I think piecemeal the, the monetary policy response has been. Um, but yeah, that, that could be the ultimate target. Other potential targets before then might be around 6650 here. And you know, ultimately our market can sometimes find support and resistance every 100 points away. It's been a lost couple of years for the ASX, for the top 200. Really, we haven't been, uh, we haven't added much across, since, since basically early 2021. It's been a lost two years. There have obviously been dividends, but even the dividends have been a little bit lackluster. So for our market, we really are being hampered by the very, very high bond yields. And we're really hoping or praying that there's not too many more and that the rate cuts do come soon. The US markets look a lot more positive. They did enjoy a nice rally throughout most of this year, or at least sort of the first sort of six to, to eight months of this year. And that was due to the belief that 
you know, interest rates were peaking, that they'd reached peak rates and that, you know, we'd see rate cuts next year. Now, unfortunately, across the past couple of months, it seems like they've started to price in the fact that maybe there will be another rate rise and that rate cuts next year are becoming increasingly unlikely. Regardless, from a technical perspective, they are right at their key level on the S&P 500. There's a bit of support and maybe the uptrend line sitting at 4250. There's also the 200 day moving average not far beyond that. Should these key levels break, however, we could see a significantly further sell off. So we're right at the key levels now. We are at the same level, well, similar key levels on our XGO, and we're now actually hoping that the data starts to weaken a little bit. Obviously, no one wants to see things, you know, get negative. No one wants to see a recession, but unfortunately, it might take just that and to get up to get inflation under control. I will leave it here for this week, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video. If you did, let us know in a comment. Click the like button. Click subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.